Anastasia Chatska. I'm a fashion designer, pattern maker, and sewing educator. And I'm so happy you're here sewing along with me today. You might just think, I know how to take my bust waist and hip measurement. Well, those are not the only measurements that we need. There are all kinds of other measurements we need, like center waist to the tip of the shoulder, your shoulder length, your neck measurement, your apex to apex, or nipple to nipple as I like to call it. There are so many other measurements we need to take to make sure you're gonna have a professional fitting garment. And this is actually going to be really interesting. We are gonna go over some things that you probably haven't even thought about before. So make sure you watch all the way to the end because you are gonna look at clothing with a whole new perspective now. Even if you're not a fashion designer, you're just gonna enjoy your clothes that much more. Welcome to Sew Anastasia. And today I'm gonna show you how to take a perfect set of measurements on your body. Did you know there are 20 different measurements you need to take just for the bodice? crazy, right? So follow along and we are gonna go over all of those measurements in detail. So every single time you're sewing or pattern drafting or need to measure a garment, it's going to turn out great. Are you ready? We are going to take 20 different measurements so that way we can make a professionally fitting bodice. It is gonna fit like a glove. Throughout this video, I'm gonna give you a lot of tips on measuring. And the first one is to make sure when you're measuring yourself or someone else, make sure you're not pulling this tape measure. You don't wanna see it squishing the body. You wanna make sure that the tape measure is just laying nice and flat across the body. And you also don't wanna put any fingers of ease in this. Just make sure it's laying perfectly flat across your body so you can get the true body measurement. And then when you're pattern drafting, you can add the ease. The first measurement I'm going to take is a full bust measurement. So a full bust measurement means that I'm going to be measuring all the way around the body at the fullest point of the bust. And when you're doing this, you wanna make sure that your tape measure is parallel to the floor. So you don't want your tape measure being way down here, lower in the back, and coming up to the bust. You wanna make sure that it is parallel to the floor. So that is tip number two to make sure you get that proper bust measurement. Slipping on me a little bit, so tricky on the dress form sometimes. And it looks like my measurement for the bust on this dress form is going to be 34 and 5 eighths. So a lot of times I get asked, how precise do I need to be in the measuring? Is it to the inch? Is it to the quarter inch? Where is that? Well, I like to go to the eighth. Sometimes we'll go to the 16th, but usually it's just anywhere in the ace. And that's because we need to make sure we get a perfect fitting garment. So I wrote down my bust measurement, and now I'm gonna move on to the waist. So my waist measurement is gonna be number two for me. So for the waist measurement, you want to measure at the natural waist, and that is going to be 25 and a quarter on the stress form. You might be wondering, how do I find the natural waist measurement on myself, right? Well, tip number three is act like a teacup, short and stout, Put your hands on your waist and tip to the side. And where your body indents in is your natural waist. If you love what you're seeing so far, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when all the other videos come out. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for watching. Now let's get back to those measurements. Number three is going to be the abdomen. And you're probably like, how the heck do I measure that? Well, what I want you to do is measure three inches down from the waist and then go ahead and put that measurement all the way around your body. But if you're doing this to yourself or someone else, it might move on you, right? So a great tip for this is taking a pin and measuring three inches down and putting it into the shirt or the pants that the person is wearing and do it in a few different spots on the front and then also on the back. So that way you know when you're measuring all the way around the person or the dress form that it is perfectly three inches down all the way around. So now when I measure this, I'm just going to make sure that my tape measure is right below those pins and I'm gonna come all the way around the dress form And my abdomen measurement is 32 for this dress form. Next, I'm going to measure the hips. And you might be thinking, well, the hips aren't part of my bodice. Well, maybe you want a longer shirt or a longer blouse or a tunic or something. We need to make sure it's going to fit on your hips as well. 
So your hips are generally nine inches down from your waist, but this can vary for everyone. So I want you to measure the biggest part of your body. So it could be right where your butt is, could be where your hips are, this is different on everyone. Um, so for this dress form, I am going to measure nine inches down and then I am going to measure around the dress form, so the circumference. So nine inches down, right over her bodacious booty here. And we got 35 and a half. So the hips on this dress form are 35 and a half. Next is number five. I'm going to be measuring the center length. And we're gonna do this measurement for front and back. So we're gonna write down two measurements for this one. So this one goes from the base of the neck at center front here, all the way down to the waist at center front. And I'm gonna measure right above the twill tape that's here. And it looks like it is 14. So that measurement goes right to your waist. And pretty much all of our measurements going forward go right to the waistline. But you're not a dress form and you don't have twill tape permanently on you at your waist. So we are going to mimic that on our own body with a piece of elastic. So all you need to do is take the elastic, tie it around your waist and tie it in a knot because all of our measurements going forward are going to be to the waist. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them are. So we wanna make sure that we're perfectly measuring to the waist when we take all of these different measurements. And this is gonna make sure we get accurate measurements while we're measuring. So you can think of this as twill tape on the dress form, but for your body. A nice consistent line for all of your measurements going forward. We're still on number five. We're going to do five for the back. So we're going to do base of the neck all the way down to the waist. And on this dress form, it looks like it is 16. Number six is called full length. So we're gonna be taking a measurement from the base of the neck, right where the shoulder seam would be at the base of your neck, over the bust point, down where the princess line would be on your body to the waist. And that one is going to be 16 and 7 eighths. I also have a tip for this measurement. So you know how I said to find the shoulder seam, the base of your neck? Well, we don't have shoulder seams on our bodies. So a great thing to do is put on a t-shirt that has a shoulder seam. So that way you know exactly where to measure at. Or you could also chalk on a shoulder measurement to a shirt that you have on. And it's always a great idea to take these measurements with a really fitted shirt. Number six also has a back measurement we need to take. So we are going to go at the base of the neck at the shoulder seam over the back where the princess line is all the way down to the waist. And this measurement is 17. Number seven is the shoulder slope. And first I'm gonna do this for the front and then the back. So for this one, you're gonna start at the tip of the shoulder where that seam is on the shoulder, which you should have marked now. And we're gonna go over the bust for this one. So sometimes this one can slip to the side. It can go over the front. Really make sure you're going over the fullest point of the bust and then to center front. And my measurement for this is 17. For the back, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna measure the tip of the shoulder at the shoulder seam over the back to the waist and I get 16 and a half for this measurement. Number eight is called the new strap measurement. This one is gonna go from the base of your neck at the shoulder seam over the top of the bust and then to the side seam. And for this measurement, I get 16 and, what do we got? We got 16 and three quarters. Sometimes it's hard to see. So if you're trying to measure this one on someone else or yourself, it's going from the base of your neck, on the side of your bust, and then to the side seam perfectly. So again, a great tip for this one is putting on a shirt that has a tight side seam on it or chalking on a side seam to an existing tight t-shirt that you have so you know exactly where to stop on the side seam because this could totally mess up if you're pulling it too far to the back or too far to the front. This one needs to come perfectly to the side seam on your body. Number nine is the bust step and you are gonna start at the center of your shoulder at your shoulder seam and we are gonna measure down to the fullest point of the bust. So my bust depth on this dress form is about, I would say eight and three quarters. The second part of number nine is the bust radius. And you wanna start where you left off on the last measurement for the biggest part of the bust and you're gonna come under the bust. So for this dress form, it is two and three quarters. 
So this measurement is from the biggest part of your bust all the way under your bust. Imagine to where the underwire on your bra is. And so you want to get that full measurement under your bust. And this measurement is so important because we all have different bust sizes. Even if you have the same waist size as someone, you might have a different bust size. We need to make sure this bodice fits us correctly. So make sure you're going from the biggest point to the bottom of your bra. Number 10 is the bust span. So you want to find the center of the bust on the right and the center of the bust on the left. So this one is six and three quarters. And then for this measurement, you want to divide in two, making our bust span three and three eighths. Next is our side seam length. So we're going to go from the underarm to the waist. Now in the book, it's always going to tell you to go right under the arm plate, but you don't have an arm plate. You have an arm, right? Okay. So what I like to do is measure down about three quarters of an inch from the very highest point of your armpit, and then put a pin in your shirt or your tank top, or whatever it is you're wearing. And then you can measure from that point down because you don't want your sleeve to be way up into your armpit, but you do want it to be very fitted because these measurements are going to be a fitted glove of your body. So we are going to measure from this pin all the way down to the waist, and that's going to be seven and three quarters. Number 12 is going to be the back neck. So we are going to measure at the base of the neck from center back over to the shoulder seam that you have at the base of your neck still. And so for this dress form, it's going to be three inches. Tip number nine is for finding the center back of your neck. So what you can do is measure from your shoulder seam to your shoulder seam, since you should already have that on your body or your client that you're measuring, and then just divide in two and then go ahead and put a chalk mark at center back. Number 13 is the shoulder length. So we're going to be measuring from the base of the neck at the shoulder seam to the tip of the shoulder. And that's going to be five inches for the stress form here. So a lot of times I get asked, where does the tip of my shoulder start and end, right? Because we have an arm, we're not a dress form. So I really like to identify this with putting on a nice fitted t-shirt that has a good armhole in it. And it's going to start right where that seam is, where your sleeve starts. So go ahead and just measure to that seam that's there. Number 14 is our across shoulder measurement. So this measurement is going to start at the base of the neck, and then it's going to go to the tip of the shoulder. And this one is going to be seven and three eighths. So just to go over how to do this on a person, you're just going to go from the base of your neck at the center to the tip of your shoulder. Next is the across shoulder measurement for the back, which is also a part of number 14. So we're going to go center back of the neck, which you should already have marked to the tip of the shoulder. And this measurement is seven and a half. Number 15 is across the chest front. So what we are going to do is find where the center of our armhole is. We're going to measure one inch up and I'm going to put a pin here. So it is right about here. Obviously you can't put a pin into yourself. So find the center of your armhole, measure one inch up. Now what we're going to do is go to the center front of the body to that pin right there. So that's going to be six and a half inches on the stress form. Number 16 is across back. So we are going to go from center back over to the armhole. And again, I've measured up one inch above the center of my armhole. So if the center of my armhole is here, I've measured one inch up. So we're going to go from center back over to the armhole. And I have about six and three quarters. Number 17 is the bust arc. So we are going to go from center front over the boss, and then we're going to end two inches below the arm plate, which is going to give us about nine and a half inches. Number 18 is the back arc. And the first thing we need to do is make sure that we have a chalk mark or a pin two inches below your armhole. And now what we're going to do is measure from this point all the way over to center back. And this is going to give us our back arc measurement. So let's place our tape measure there and then measure all the way over to center back, making sure that your tape measure is staying parallel to the floor. And my measurement for this one is going to be seven and three eighths. Number 19 is the waist arc and we are going to do the waist arc front and back separately. So for the waist arc front, we're going to go from center front all the way over to the side seam. 
Now, if you don't have center front marked on yourself, make sure you find the center front of your waist. And how are you gonna do that? So tip number 11 is finding the center front of your body. So what I want you to do, since you should have your side seams on yourself already, is measure from side seam to side seam, divide in half, and then go ahead and measure from the side seam over to whatever that measurement is. And for this one, it was six and three quarters. So then I would go ahead and put a chalk mark on myself right there. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the back waist arc measurement. We're gonna go from center back all the way over to side seam, and that's gonna give me five and five eighths. And if you don't know how to find the center back on yourself, just make sure you're measuring from the side seam across the back to the other side seam. Get that measurement and then just divide it in half. And then you need to measure from the side seam all the way over to whatever that measurement is and go ahead and put a chalk mark and that's gonna be your center back. Get excited, we have made it to the very last measurement. Number 20 is going to be your dart placement or your princess line placement. So what we're gonna do is measure over from center front, which you should already have marked, over to where the princess line is. But if you are a human, you do not have a princess line going through your body. So we need to find out where this line is. So what I like to do is just come down to right where the center of our bust is, and then you're just going to come all the way down to your waist. And this measurement on this dress form is going to be two and seven eight. So the tip for finding your princess line dart placement on your own body is coming vertically down from your biggest bust point. A lot of times I like to use a ruler for this. I'll just go ahead and take a ruler and put it right there and then draw chalk lines. So that way I know exactly where it's at on the waist. We did it, we just finished taking 20 different measurements and I gave you 12 different tips that are not gonna be found in any book anywhere. So that way you can actually measure the human body. So now that I have all of these bodice measurements, I can make myself a sloper bodice or the dress form, because I just took the dress forms measurements. But now that we have all of these measurements and we make a sloper, we can design anything from that sloper because the sloper is the basic foundation for pattern drafting. And if you wanna learn more about what a sloper is, make sure you check out my video on what is a sloper. And next week, I'm gonna show you how to make a sloper with all of these measurements. So that way you can have a perfect fitting sloper for your pattern drafting needs. Even if you're not gonna make a sloper, wasn't that cool? All the different measurements that go into a garment. So next time you're shopping and you see all those clothes, you can have a new appreciation for all of the measurements and effort that went into creating that garment. Thanks so much for watching So Anastasia today. I hope you had fun and enjoyed learning all about taking measurements. If you have any questions about that, leave it down below and I will get back with you as soon as I can. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, give it some applause, and leave a comment down below. And if you have any tips or tricks for taking measurements, I know everyone else would love to hear it as well, so leave it down below. And if you're not already a subscriber to So Anastasia, make sure you hit that notification bell and subscribe because I put out new videos every single week. So much sewing content, love it. Um, and make sure you follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and TikTok, and all those social media websites, so that way we can stay connected and creative together. And I would love to see your projects, so make sure you tag me in them at Sonya Anastasia, so I can share them with everyone else and keep us all creative and inspired. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.